Mankind has come so far over the centuries, along with mysteries and discoveries which has changed the way we see the world. Join me in my journey as I reveal the truth of evolution. The very Earth's existence began around 3.5 million years ago. From cells to multicellular organisms in the sea. But over time, life emerged onto land. But for 200 million years, dinosaurs were the master species. But 65 million years ago, the age of dinosaurs gave away to age of mammals. Evolution is a theory by Charles Darwin suggesting different living organisms were developed from earlier forms. Australopithecus was the first of our ancestors. They were quite small and females were around 3.5 feet as males were 4.5 feet. They had strong teeth to eat fruit, vegetables and roots. Homo habilis were the next generation which showed a high change in our evolution stage. They used tools to overcome common tasks and they were also known to have been able to talk to each other by the size of their brain size. Males grew around 7.2 feet and females grew around 8.6 feet as they were on an omnivore diet but ate food raw. They then morphed into a Homo erectus which was the first kind to have walked on two feet in an upright position. Both male and female grew around 5.10 feet and were also omnivores. Then came the Homo nephanderals which were the closest related to us. Females grew around five foot and males grew around five foot five. They were the strongest type of humans, which used their strength to take down large animals, but they also ate fruit and vegetables. Then there's us, the Homo sapiens. Hello Stephen, how are you doing today? I'm, I'm fine. In one of your books you make the point that the beetle has stopped evolving. Do you believe the human has stopped evolving? First of all, we're surrounded with evidence of continuing evolution. We just have to look at our dogs and our cereal plants. After all, humans are fed primarily by eight cereal crops, all of which are grasses and all of which are profoundly different from what they were hundreds and certainly thousands of years ago. And there are historical records for all of this. Geneticists throughout the world do experiments on fruit flies and their laboratory bottles and on bacteria on their aga plates. There's abundant surrounding evidence of evolution at the small scale that occurs over the time span, decades to hundreds of years. There's no appreciable evolution the sense of directional change in human beings, which you wouldn't expect there to be in a very large species of one five billion people living all over the world. Entities like that don't change. They tend to be quite stable for long periods of time. So in fact, I think what you see on this planet today is exactly what you would expect if evolution were so as indeed it is. In one of your books, you make the point that the beetle has stopped evolving. Do you believe the human has stopped evolving? Put it, because there's a premise implied in that question, namely that there's an expectation not only of evolutionary change, but of a kind of progress which ought to make our toes smaller and our brains bigger, right? That's what people have in mind. That's really not the right premise. The, the right premise is the large, stable population ought to be stable. So, although what you say is almost certainly so, maybe we're more stable, when you ask it that way, have we stopped evolving? That's under, there's an implicit assumption in that, that it's surprising, that there's something anomalous that it ought to have been. I have to read 
podcast. It's like we're not changing in any directional fashion. That's exactly what you would expect. So I would say we haven't stopped evolving. That kind of stability is what evolution predicts ought to be happening in human beings. At the same time as there's stability with respect to any long-term directional change, there's all sorts of evolution going on in human beings, but it's this back and forth, minor little tinkering. I mean, for example, take any classic case, the frequency of the sickly gene is decreasing now in black people in the new world. It's the sickly gene through a complex classic story for its protection against malaria and the same dosages that no longer have malarial danger, the gene therefore has no advantage and is now selected against. These kinds of changes go on all the time. What we don't find is directional change and we wouldn't expect it. Humans are originally from Africa, but when our ancestors Homo erectus started spreading over Europe, they met the Neanderthals and started breeding with them. Because Europe is a lot colder and different weather conditions, it forces the Homo erectus to adapt. Around 7,000 years ago, European skin lightened because of the cereal-rich diet from the Neolithic farmers because they had more grain and not enough vitamin D. Another example of evolution between the races are Asians, as they have slanted eyes, protecting their eyes from the cold temperatures, wind, and high light reflection. Within the next 50,000 years, technology would have increased an extreme amount, along with our knowledge, which will require us to evolve bigger brains, which will result in humans having larger heads. We are taking advantage of our planet, and this will force us to move out of space to find a new home. This move will make us further from the sun, making our eyes two to three times bigger to adapt to the environment.